Good morning, everyone. How are you guys doing today? I want to make this short video on the importance of making sure that you're looking at the lot setbacks when dealing with properties that are going to need additions. Now, we looked at this property. This was a property that was brought to us by one of our students. It looked like a phenomenal deal from a quick glance. However, as we started really digging deeper and deeper into it, we noticed that there were a couple challenges and we still explored all of the different options, but I wanna make this short video to ensure that you guys are looking for some of these same challenges or variables um, in the areas that call for forced appreciation. Now I wanna go over the listing sheet real quick to give you some background on the actual home. You can see his properties on the MLS, active 509 Hazel Ave Glencoe, uh, listed for $550,000. Originally, it was listed for $700, so super high. He's on the market for 254 days. Is built in 1909. You can see the lot dimensions are 50 by 210. Now, that's a great lot, especially for Glencoe or the, uh, the North Shore area. A couple other things. We've got a five-bedroom, three-and-a-half bath. Full basement, it's got a master, no no uh, bathroom in the basement, so if you wanted to do that, you'd have to look at uh, you know, putting a sump pit down there and, and adding all the plumbing and whatnot. And then we're at 1,824 square feet for the whole home. Now it says square footage, uh, it says square footage source other, but let's see if we can uh, Confirm that here, which it does, building square feet, 824 square feet. So that's a good thing. Now, what are a couple of things that I want to cover? The first thing that I do is I get an aerial view of the home so I can see exactly what we're dealing with. Again, this is a tool on MLS. You guys can do the same thing on Google Earth. So I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to reposition. You can see where the White House right here. Now, a couple of things that I noticed right out of the gate and that is that we are on a corner lot now typically corner lots are going to be a little bit of a negative or give you some more challenges when trying to add additional square feet now the reason why the property is a negative and this is right from the buyer we've purchased a, uh, a handful of corner lots and we have sold them however we have gotten a lot of negative feedback based on that there is a lack of privacy from the corner lot. Now, you don't really have a true backyard. These inner these inner lots or inner homes right here, you can see you have more of the traditional backyard with the fenced in yard. Some of these have a garage in the back. Some of them are attached on the side. Some of them are in the front, whatnot. But you have that true traditional backyard where you get a lot more privacy. The corner lots really don't allow for that. Another thing that you want to keep in mind is well, can I put up a fence? And the answer is most of the time, yes, but typically the fence can only be four feet versus these um, inner lots where a fence can be six feet. Now, again, you want to call the village to confirm all of this because each village seems to have its own set of uh, rules for this. But what I also notice is that this home is literally right on top of the neighbor's home. Now, that's as much, oh no, I can zoom in one more, really give you guys a good look. Now again, this is the front of the house. Bluff Street is uh, one of the, the side streets. But looking and thinking, all right, where is my, my kitchen in there? If I am going to relay out the uh, floor plan on the first floor, the first thing that I want to know is what is my footprint of the first floor? Now what I mean by the footprint is, how many square feet do I have to work with on my first floor? Because I'm already thinking in terms of, all right, what am I going to do to this property? How is it going to be laid out? What's the features? How's the flow or the floor plan going to work? And when I mean features, am I going to have an office or a study or a library down here? Do I have room to do a, an open concept uh, kitchen to living room with a separate dining room? Really, uh, really making this home ideal for a buyer because if we're going to buy it at anywhere close to 550 or even less, we know that by the time we put it on, put on a addition, we're going to be over the million dollar price point. The second question is, is can I do an addition and where can I do an addition? Now, what you have to call the village for is the setbacks. Now, they're going to have setbacks 
off of the lot lines. Now you can see we've got a lot line here, or actually it's going to be, this is going to be an easement because the city is going to own this, uh, this, typically the sidewalk and maybe some of this, this area. So you're going to have your lot, sat, your lot sat back off the sidewalk from uh, Hazel and then set back off a of bluff. You're gonna have a setback on the back of your home. Remember, this home was built in 1909, so I can promise you that the setbacks have changed and they would never allow somebody built to build a home right on top of the, uh, the lot line. So we can see we have plenty of room over here, which is actually where our garage is. Again, thinking in terms of the buyers, the buyer gonna to wanna to walk 70 or 80 feet from his attached this is a one, one and a half car garage all the way to his home. Most likely not. It'd be more ideal to have it attached. This one's attached. This one's attached. This one's detached. However, his home could be, could have sold for considerably less. Right? So getting back to these lot lines, if I want to put an addition on, you're going to have to comply with the current codes of the new setbacks. And what that means is, I'll just give you some examples. Some of the other properties that we've purchased, you're gonna have usually anywhere from eight to 10 feet of a setback on the side yards. Usually the front setback is anywhere from 20 to 30 feet. It's gonna really be dependent on the other homes on the street. Now on, on this street, let me see if I can see, I'll just use bluff. It's not allowing me to uh, scroll over, but I'll just use Bluff Street for an example. You can see that a lot of these homes are in line with each other. So whatever the distance from the front of the home to the sidewalk is, that's going to be their uh, their setback or the front of the home to the street. You know, obviously it's going to be uh, one or the other distance, but you want to get that information from the village and make sure. All right, what am I right? What are my what's my side setback? And what's my front setback? Uh, obviously, I can't put an addition back here. But even if we wanted to put an addition on the top of this, this is actually a two and a half story home, by the way, already. But let's say we wanted to put an addition on the top of here. Could we do that? And the answer is you can do anything. But it's going to cost you a lot more money. And the roof lines are going to be very challenging. And what I mean by that is if you put on a half story onto this property, which it's, I've kind of given you some conflicting information because you also have height restrictions and being that this home is already two and a half stories, you're probably really close to that height restriction. But let's say this home was only two stories and you wanted to put on a half story. You could do that. However, you have to comply with the new setbacks, which means if this is eight, to 10 feet, let's go with 10 feet. That means you have to come 10 feet in and then build up with your addition and then go and tie into the front. Now it just makes for a uh, uh, not so aesthetic look from the exterior of the home and also makes for a challenging layout in the inside because you have to have some sort of pitch on your roof to let the water run off and if you already have to come in 10 feet off this back setback where, where are you gaining really any square feet? The other thing you want to keep in mind if you do want to put square feet and go straight up keep in mind the height restriction and know that anything that you can put three stories or we'll call it two and a half because typically that uh, that second floor that third floor is only a half floor and you can only be half of the square feet of the floor below it so if this this second floor was a thousand square feet which I know that's not the case because the whole home is 1800 square feet but let's say for easy numbers was 1,000 square feet on the second floor, you could do or you could have 500 square feet on this um, half story for your third floor. You could have 500 square feet. Now let's get back to lot setbacks. You could put an addition on the side here, but again, you have to comply with the setbacks. You have to come in 10 feet or 8, whatever the setbacks are, and then come out and then come back and tie back into the home. Again, it just makes it for a uh, not so aesthetic look and it also makes for a more challenging layout on the inside of the home. And what I mean by that is when I'm looking at these houses, I'm already thinking about what's my layout gonna be in the inside. 
what am I going to move? What am I going to keep? Where are my load bearing walls? And how much room do I have to work with? And what I mean by that is, what is my square footage for my first floor, my second floor, and my third floor, which is a half story? And I want to just give you guys some examples of some amazing, uh, sorry about that, some amazing, I can't grab it. Show this to you guys real quick here. So we're going to look at, I'm just going to show you an ideal situation right here. We've got this property in Glencoe, architectural plans, floor plans. I'll open this up for you. Now this property is property that we purchased. And I want to show you, this is the first floor. Now these are the proposed plans that of what we want to do to the property. Now we have 1,767 square feet to work with on the first floor alone. We've got our front door right here, so we walk into a huge living room, 25 by 18, coming into again a huge kitchen, 21 by, by 10 and a half. This is the ideal layout for homes. You come in the you come in the front door, gives you that great wow factor, fireplace, it, the whole entire whole floor just flows very very nice coming in got the butler's pantry great size walk-in pantry coming into the dining room you've got your double doors going off the back of the home even the kitchen or the the kitchen sink which is right here we've got our window it's looking out to the back of the home we've got a lot of window space and a lot of window light in the kitchen uh, which is going to be a, a plus and we've got our dining room that's separate that's good and we also have our study or den or office, whatever uh, somebody would want to use this. Again, just an ideal location. Even going into the second floor, this is 1,567 square feet. We've got a very, very large master bedroom, 25 by 14. Uh, great size uh, master bath, standalone tub, stand-in shower, double bowl vanity, 12 by 13, walk-in closet. We've got both of our ensuite um, bedrooms right here, meaning that they have a bathroom attached directly to the bedroom. They both have walk-in closets, and then we've got our staircase going up to our third floor, where we've got number we have bedroom four and five, and then a little rec room, furnace, and then a desk coming out of the uh, the dormers. This home even has a basement, so again we've got laundry room down in the basement. Just a and all, all over, you look at this property, you've got everything that a buyer is going to want. Now, again, this property is uh, going to sell for $1.4, maybe more, $1.4 million. Uh, but thinking in terms of what is my square footage on my first floor, second floor, and do I have a third floor as my half story, and what am I going to do with it? Because that's really going to dictate your ARV on the flow, the function of your home. You can put a ton of money into a home that only has a thousand squ square feet to work with on the first floor, but it's going to be very challenging to fit all your bedrooms, your laundry room on your uh, second floor that's only a thousand square feet. So keep that in mind, guys, and um, I'm not going to drag this video on too long, but always, always reach out any questions, I'm going to be making a ton more of these videos. Dustin's going to be making some of these videos. We're going to be working together, giving you guys all the latest and greatest information. Have a good night. Talk to you soon.